Beauty and the Beast. A poor merchant went to collect some cargo from a ship. His daughter, Beauty, asked him to bring her back a rose. But the ship left port early, so he started for home empty-handed. As night fell, he came upon a dark castle. The merchant knocked at the door, but nobody answered. The door was unlocked, so he went inside. There he found a room prepared for a guest. How strange, he said to himself. These must be friendly people. I'm sure I can stay one night, so he settled down to sleep. The next morning, the merchant found breakfast laid out for him in the dining room. After eating his fill, he left the castle and found himself in a beautiful rose garden. At least I can take beauty the present I promised her, the merchant thought, as he broke off a single stem. At that very moment, he heard a fearful howl. Coming towards him was a hideous beast. The man screamed in terror. How dare you steal a rose, growled the beast. To pay for this, you must send me the first person you see on arriving home to be my companion. The merchant was too terrified to refuse. I will, he stammered. The merchant arrived home and was met by his daughter. She welcomed him and gave him tea and cakes to eat by the fire she had lit. He gave her the rose he had picked, but her delight turned to sorrow as reluctantly he explained what had happened. He told her about his night in the castle, about picking the rose, and about his encounter with the beast. I have to send you to live with this horrible beast, he said miserably, but I can't bear to think of what I have agreed to. If only I could go in your place, he wept. Do not be sad, father, Beauty said. I will go. I am sure that there must be some good in this poor beast. The day arrived for Beauty to go to the beast's castle. Sadly, she said goodbye to her father, who was weeping bitterly. You are more precious than my own life. Let me go instead, he begged. No, father, it is I who must go, Beauty replied, and I am sure all will be well. She set off through the forest all alone, and at last she arrived at the beast's castle. She knocked at the door, but no one came to answer. So she let herself in, just as her father had done. Then she searched all around the castle, but to her surprise, never saw another soul. Beauty did her best to be happy. The castle was well looked after, and there was always good food to eat and a soft bed to sleep in. But try as she might, she couldn't help feeling lonely. I just wish there was someone to keep me company, Beauty sighed. She thought that she was being watched, but she never saw the beast. Sometimes she would see a shadow fall in the light from a doorway. At other times, she thought she saw a figure reflected in a mirror. Days passed and still she had not caught sight of the beast. Beauty began to wonder whether he really existed or if she was dreaming all of this. One day, as Beauty sat in the rose garden, a dark shadow fell upon her. She heard a terrible growling, and then a voice said, Come and walk with me. Beauty looked up to see the beast for the first time. He was even uglier than she had expected, and she felt very frightened. However, she answered as bravely as she could, Of course I will. The beast extended a hairy paw towards her. She was surprised to find that he took her gently by the hand and led her through the garden. They strolled around and admired the flowers. To her astonishment, 
Beauty found that the beast seemed to know a lot about gardening. As the days passed, Beauty learned that the beast was not as fearsome as he had seemed, and they often walked and talked together. Slowly, they became friends. Beauty realized that for all his ugliness, the beast was a kind and gentle soul who took good care of her, and she became fond of him. I'm grateful for the kindness that you have shown me, she said. However, Beauty was still sad. One evening, they were eating dinner together. As usual, the beast had laid out a fine feast with all kinds of good things to eat and drink. Beauty sat at the table, but she had no appetite. Soon, she pushed her plate away. What's wrong? The beast asked. Beauty plucked up all her courage and said to him, I miss my father. If only I could see him and know that he's well. I fear that perhaps he is not. The beast pulled out a mirror and gave it to her. Look into this mirror and you will see whatever you wish, said the beast. Beauty looked into the mirror and saw her father lying ill in bed. I must go to him, she gasped. He is all alone and he needs me. With great sadness, the beast allowed her to return to her home. As she left the castle, he pressed a mirror into her hand. Take my mirror and look into it and think of me sometimes, he pleaded. I can't live without you, he added. So Beauty returned home, where she found her father gravely ill. She was shocked to see the state he was in. Oh, father, she cried, falling to her knees beside his bed. If only I'd known you were ill, I'd have come home sooner. Just to see you is cure enough, her father said, smiling. At the sight of his daughter, he started to feel better. Soon he was out of bed and fully recovered. Beauty reassured her father that the beast had treated her kindly and with respect. However, the mirror lay abandoned, and Beauty was so busy nursing her father that she forgot to look into it to see the beast, as he had asked. The days went by, and Beauty and her father were very happy together. Then one day, Beauty came across the mirror. Suddenly, she remembered her promise to the beast. She looked into the mirror and, to her horror, saw the beast lying very still in his rose garden. I must return to the beast, father, she cried. I fear that he is dying. Tearfully, she embraced her father. Then she raced through the forest to be with the beast. Oh dear, she thought. I hope that I am not too late to help my poor beast. When Beauty reached the garden, she saw that the beast was lying there just as she had seen in the mirror. Beauty rushed over to the beast and fell to her knees beside him. He lay so still that she feared the very worst. For now she remembered that he had said that he could not live without her. Please don't die, my darling beast, she wept. I know that I abandoned you, but now I have returned to be at your side. I love you with all my heart. And then she leaned over to kiss him. Suddenly, before her very eyes, the beast began to shake violently. He swayed from side to side and his head began to spin. What, what's happening? She stuttered. For now, Beauty could see that he was changing shape. Into the most handsome prince. Oh, cried Beauty. Oh, Beauty, cried the prince. A cruel fairy turned me into a beast until a time when a good and beautiful woman would fall in love with me. You have broken the spell I was under, and now I can be myself again. Will you marry me? Yes, I will, replied Beauty, as the prince put his arms around her and kissed her. Beauty's father was overjoyed to hear the news and the happy couple were married the very next day. The three of them lived happily ever after in the prince's castle, 
And although she knew that it wasn't really his name, Beauty couldn't help fondly calling the prince Beast for the rest of their lives.